On this episode of the LA Business Podcast, we're talking to a guest who started out as an entertainer and writing music for film and TV shows. Today, she's a restaurateur, uh, and we talk about mindset, success, pivoting during the pandemic. Let's jump right into this week's episode of the LA Business Podcast. Welcome to the LA Business Podcast, your destination to hear stories of how businesses grow and scale. I'm Robert Brill, CEO of Brill Media and the host of this podcast. Now, let's jump right into this week's interview. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the LA Business Podcast. Today, our guest is Queenie Reed, owner of Poppy and Rose and Poppy and Seed. Queenie's path to becoming a renowned restaurateur has been untraditional as she started out her career in the entertainment industry, singing in venues throughout the country and writing music for film and television shows. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. So so tell us about how, first of all, tell us about Poppy and Rose. Tell us about the food. How did you get into the restaurant business? So um, just like you said, my uh, entrance into the restaurant industry was very unconventional. Um, I technically started right before I actually joined my husband in Poppy and Rose. I was a controller for a fashion brand um, mm. after I left the entertainment industry. Um, and Poppy and Rose basically was uh, conceived um, on a whim. My husband mm -hmm. had started a catering company called Root of All Food. Um, Root of All Food started to grow in leaps and bounds by like servicing a lot of celebrity clients in Los Angeles. He had a really high clientele and um, he needed space to basically uh, house everything that he was doing. And so he found like this really cheap real estate. It was grungy and dirty, didn't look like anything. Um, and got a killing on what the lease is. And so from there, he partnered with um, another partner at that time and um, they started Poppy and Rose. They kind of, it kind of was there just to service the flower market. The flower market opens very early. So uh, Poppy and Rose would open at five o'clock in the morning so mm. that um, people who are working within the market had somewhere to go and grab some food. Um, and then it kind of just turned into like this thing. We started, you know, serving chicken and waffles and started becoming known for our chicken and waffles. And we started mm. getting a line out of the door. Like it just became this little phenomenon. And we started being, you know, written up an eater and thrillist and people started knowing about us. And, you know, that's kind of how it, it started. It kind of was just like a, I need space. And who knew? Here comes this restaurant and this great, this great brand. So, pop, so Poppy and Seed was what you're selling flowers. Yes. So Poppy and Rose, no, we're, we're selling food. We sell Got brunch it. items. Um, we sell, we're a brunch restaurant. And the reason why it's called Poppy and Rose is because um, Poppy is the state flower for California. Got it. Rose was the state flower for the other partner from Georgia. And that's how the, um, the, the name came about. And where, where in LA are you, are you guys located? So we're in the flower market, downtown Los Angeles. Got it. Um, Sorry. So right, yeah, right in the, the heart, you can actually enter and exit from our building to get, um, to the flower market. So how do you had, so it sounds like you hadn't had any, I mean, how do you had any experience like making food and, and being a restaurateur prior to this? No, I, I <laughs> <laughs> um, my hospitality uh, background uh, came from managing hotels when I was singing mm -hmm. and, and writing, you know, you always have to have something else that you're doing until you're making it. Right. And so um, that's what I did. I, you know, managed front desk um, all up and down West Hollywood mm -hmm. and in Los Angeles. And that's where my hospitality came from. But as far as knowing how to operate a restaurant or how to uh, run a kitchen, that uh, was foreign. Yeah, I imagine. Um, so how did you overcome that knowledge gap of like how to run a kitchen? Well, my husband happens to be um, just not only a chef, but a, mm -hmm. a very great um, business head as far as like mm -hmm. controlling costs and things like that. And so um, before I joined him, I started with the catering company. I you know, brought in my accounting skills from being a controller at a fashion brand. Um, and um, we kind of, we met at the standard of West Hollywood, just a little bit of background. Um, mm -hmm. I was in the accounting department. He was the executive chef there. And um, Poppy and Rose was alive and well then and doing its thing. And we worked very closely at the standard and we kind of created like this system as far as like how to control costs mm -hmm. and on that line. 
Um, and so coming in, I kind of just use like, you know, as far as like operations, what, what I learned from being a controller, also my personality, I have a big personality. I come from entertainment, so I know how to entertain people. Um, I'm nice. <laughs> so like I dine a lot. So I kind of just put myself in the position of being the consumer and what would I like and what would make me feel good and kind of went from there. And so how do you, how do you grow the business? Like it, like there's so many moving parts. How do you delineate responsibility inside, inside your business to ensure that like the best people are doing the best roles? Like tell us about that learning curve and, and what you've learned along the way. Well, I had to really, you know, my, my first, my position is being a controller. When I came into the, um, the company, there wasn't an accounting department. Um, and so I knew firsthand that I needed to look at the procedures and the operating procedures. How how are we training? What does our training manual look like? What does um, what are the materials lo that looks that what does our materials look like that we give out to our employees so that they understand brand and so um, that and they understand what we're trying to convey and what we're about. Um, and so what I did was um, because when I joined, um, it was at the end of 2019. Um, we had just closed like a little bit in January to kind of like revamp it um, and kind of like rebrand it a little bit um, with me joining the team. And then we ran smack dead into the pandemic. Yeah. So a lot of my learning was um, ah, that was yeah. <laughs> trying to figure it out because I had to figure we had to figure out how to pivot. We had to figure out um, because we didn't know what what to do. So. Um, from there, I kind of just really, we really relied on making sure that our team was very included, making sure that um, our branding was on track because we couldn't afford to lose employees. And that's kind of where I, I put my focus when I first came in, um, just to making sure that our brand is clear. And that's really important when you start to look at selling. So what were your pivots during the pandemic? What did you, what did you do? <sighs> We were trying everything in the hat. Um, uh, yeah. But the one thing that we did do um, is because of the type of brand that we are, we um, started our giving initiative and our in-kind yeah. efforts. Um, and so um, we first started, like I, I looked at it and I said, okay, we have to fill the need. So what is the need right now, right? No one mm -hmm. can get toilet paper. We can get toilet paper because we mm -hmm. buy wholesale. Um, mm -hmm. We can get things that a lot of people were running crazy things that people are running out of the store in, you know? Um, and so we kind of pivoted and became like a little grocery. So we started letting our, um, our neighbors know that they can come and get, you know, normal things and butter, you know, oil, rice, things that really? we need. Kind of like, yeah, like we're hunkering down. You can get fresh carrots, hand sanitizer, um, right. napkins, paper plates, things that just people just couldn't get their hands on. Um, and then we started doing um, ready-made packaging meals. So we kind of figured, you know, people are still working. They're working from home. They're tired. They're stuck in their houses. They really can't move around. So how about we start giving them something that they can just put in their ovens and just heat it up? So we yeah. positioned ourselves that way. Um, we really relied on a lot of the delivery pads, and which we hadn't before. You know, we didn't. We, we only ran them four days out of the week. Um, and then the rest, you know, it took care of itself. Um, and so we just really tried to figure out what worked and the delivery pads worked. And we happened to be the only um, breakfast place that was still like actually pumping. So mm -hmm. we serviced downtown LA and it just kind of just all came together. And like, are you now, now you're open and now you have people coming into the restaurant and what are the lasting ramifications for your business of of the pandemic? Like, what what are you doing now that maybe you weren't doing before? Maybe you never thought you'd be doing. So we did um, open a patio um, on the roof that um, basically sustained us um, throughout the opens and the closures and the ups and the downs. Um, and that kind of took off on its own. It it actually became like its own little restaurant. Like people thought that the poppy patio was completely different and didn't understand that there was a restaurant downstairs. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just made it like its own little, uh, its own little niche following. Like we became really big on TikTok. I didn't even know we were on TikTok. Um, and so people started figuring us out there. Um, and that's one thing that, that is going to stay. 
Um, we're going to start now doing pop-ups there, um, dinner series, since we are a brunch restaurant and kind of bring what we're doing at Poppy and Seed to um, Poppy and Rose so that we can start, pre start preparing for our West Harbor um, opening, which is going to mesh both of those together. Um, wow. So that's one thing. And then our giving efforts have just went through the roof. Um, we created a nonprofit called the UNI Coalition, mm -hmm. and um, it's basically a teaching kitchen where we want to transfer our knowledge as far as like how to run a restaurant, um, especially for people who need second chances, um, kids that are coming out of high school trying to figure out what they want to do, and they're saying mm, college is just not really for me. Um, and you know, so that's something that got you know put into the works, um, and that's something that has now just infused itself into our brand. So it sounds like there's a little bit of a, <clears throat> I've been, I, I'm trying to remember which company it was, uh, I was, I was listening to this podcast called, uh, business wars. Oh, it was Ben and Jerry's and Ben and Jerry's instituted like the triple bottom line, more or less, right. The bottom line of the financial profit of the business community, societal, social impact. And like, I think the last one, the third one would have been like employees, like the, yeah. the benefit for employees. So how does having a societal impact or a social impact how does that benefit does that be add or detract from the bottom line of the business well we firmly believe that you know when you give and when you're a blessing blessings will come back and yeah. so what i have seen is that when we started our giving efforts we got an influx of revenue. We got an influx wow. of people that are saying that I want to come here because of your social impact and what you guys do in the community. I want you to cater my whatever, whatever. Can you do this? Can you do that? Or mm -hmm. like we got um, we got a lot of good partnerships for for our giving as well. So we did um, a donation of a thousand meals um, with Amazon, and they paid us for it to make sure that we took care of our costs and took care of our overhead when usually all of our donations come out of our pocket. Um, right. And so just that small notion that, you know, when you give, it's the things that you put out in the atmosphere that they'll come back to you. And that's what we kind of hold fast to. But it also did a little thing in our employees too. It makes them proud of where they want to work. So another thing that we focus on now, especially coming out of the pandemic, and a lot of our employees and um, even our customers are really struggling mentally as far as like coming back outside and being back out in the open and with people. And so one thing that we're focusing on is internal marketing, where we make sure that the same affirmations that we're putting out to our customers are the same affirmations that we're putting out and putting into our employees so that it's a full facet of everyone's feeling the same thing and understanding the brand. Can you um, can you tell us a little bit about you mentioned TikTok earlier? What what happened on TikTok? People <laughs> people just started like I think we we had like so many views on people's TikToks where influencers like normally you have your your influencers when you're dealing with social media that you you'll have them come in and you comp their meal and stuff like that. And so with the Poppy Patio, we didn't have to invite any influencers out. Just like large influencers that were on TikTok just started showing up and people would walk in and be like, I saw you on TikTok. And I'm like, huh? I'm like, we don't have a TikTok. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh no, such and such, such and such posted it. And I'm like, who? What? Yeah. I'm looking and I'm like, oh, like, and we have like 30,000 views on this one video. And so it's like th it, that took off on its own. And we were, we were seeing covers that we hadn't seen, you know, pre pandemic on the patio. Um, it's a, it's wow. a bigger space, but we were doing triple the numbers. Wow. So, so thank you, TikTok. Thank you. Thank you. Whoever, yeah. All the TikTokers. Thank you for TikToking. <laughs> yeah, legit, legit. Do you see do you see a trend in the types of people who are willing to come back out versus the type of people who are not willing to come back out? I, I have my own point of view on that, but you, you're seeing swaths of people, and, and you're seeing you you're, you're seeing certain types of people. Uh, you're seeing a lot of people. My question is: Are there any trends in the types of people you're seeing? Yeah. So you have, you Come have, like, you have like two different kinds of people, right? Mm -hmm. So you have the people that are grateful to be out, like mm -hmm. take as long as you need. We understand, very mm -hmm. understanding. And then you have people who are very impatient, mm -hmm. um, just very non-understanding, kind of almost very um, 
privileged. Mm -hmm. um, like I've had some people tell me when we were working during the pandemic that you're privileged to be out here and having a job. And I'm like, wait a minute, am I, I'm privileged to be risking my life. I don't yeah. see that as a privilege because I have 70 year old parents at home that we take care of. And every time right. I go home, I'm nervous and my 100%. anxiety is through the roof, you know? Yeah. So it's like you, the, the ones that, the ones that are the ones that understand what's going on and that are just grateful for the position that we're in right now, because we could be where we were. Yeah. Um, those are the ones that keep me level headed. Um, yeah. But those are the two types of people that we're seeing. Like some people are really just awful, 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 awful. Yeah, legit. Like, sheesh, like, were you not inside with the rest of everybody that was begging to get back outside and now we're outside and you don't know how to act? You're going like, to be a jerk about it. Yeah, Man, yeah. like, and then taking it out on the servers and, and us who we don't have control over what's going on. No, I don't I have that. control over that there's a mass mandate. I don't have control over that. I have to ask you now for your vaccination cards to dine in. Right. I don't have control over the staff shortage. I don't have control over that. So yeah. like you got to bear with me as I'm bearing with this situation. People. Yeah. Like one of, one of the interest, like there, there's definitely a set of mindset shifts that I've had to overcome in my business and one of them, one of them was no one, no one knows what they're doing. And I mean that in the best possible way, like in life, not even about the business, but in life, like, look, people like, no, one of the great democratizers of the pandemic, one of the key benefits of the pandemic was it's a completely even playing field. Mm -hmm. You don't yeah. know how to, how to run a business in a pandemic. Yep. The president doesn't know how to run a business in the pandemic. Yes. Uh, key leaders, key business people don't know how to run a business in a pen. No one knows how to do this. Like the people who did this last time there, it was a hundred years ago. Like right. they're, they're not around. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's quite a democratizing moment for all of us. And there's, I, I actually think there's a lot of opportunity, right? Because there's a lot of, whenever my opinion is like, whenever there's change, there's always opportunity. Right. You just got to right. be willing to like. You just have to look. You have to look for it. And there was yeah. a lot of opportunity for us. Like there was opportunity for us to grow and we got poppy and seed. Then, you know, there was there was opportunity for us to be kind, to show what humanity really is about. Because at that point, it was bleak. People were me. People were fighting grannies in the grocery store for toilet paper. Right. Like we didn't think about going to go get a towel and water. Like I'm just saying. Like it's like for 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 a small portion, we lost our minds for a second. And so you know, that's Stephen. I don't know if you can see this, but I have a little smiley face. Yeah. And I got this. My jeweler made it for me during the pandemic because I was like, we don't know if people are smiling or not. And we just assume. So, you know, let's just give a little smile out to people because people are just having hard times. Yeah. Hard times. And we're still dealing with the ramifications of that today. A hundred percent. And, you know, the, the good part is I, I just read last night. So I'm we're recording this on February 23rd, 2022. And like COVID hospitalizations and or Omicron hospitalizations in Los Angeles are down 80 percent from a month ago. That's really good. That is a good. So isn't it an endemic? I, I actually think it might. That might be national. That might be a national number. But yes, that that makes it endemic. Right. So now we should be actually starting to figure out how to to live with this, because yeah. one thing that I do know is that restaurants and businesses alike can't keep with the yo-yo. Totally. We can't we can't keep with this yo-yo like that's not the solution. So, you know, here we come again. It's like, OK, so now you can go inside with right. your mask off if you're vaccinated. Like we've been here before. Right. So let's and I know that we're all just like really trying to figure it out in the dark. Like I, I, I feel that. But we got to yeah. start learning from our mistakes, though, too. Yeah. Got to learn from what we what we've been doing and try to do something differently to get us past the hump. Yeah. We've all got to hunker down a little bit more. Not yeah. hunger down inside, but hunger down in terms of our norms. Right. Do you um do you think outside dining will at least for like Los Angeles, do you think outside dining will remain part of part of our city? Yes. I think that outdoor dining is to stay. I think that they're also going to um probably just keep the Al Fresca thing going. Um What is that? 
Al fresco. That's, so that's the um, the outdoor dining. So oh. that they they allowed you to like set up on set up on in the middle of a street or like oh, that's your point. cities. Yeah, some cities have fought against it. Um, like the reason why we were able to do our patio on upstairs mm -hmm. um, because we we don't have we didn't have any outdoor space and you don't want to be outdoors like you know around the flower market because there's so many people walking around and 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 we're in a pandemic so it was yeah. like <laughs> that would make me feel really uncomfortable um and so at least with the patio upstairs you know that was there i do find like even still today like even with our um our anaheim property that people are still very much specifically asking for outdoor dining and mm -hmm. california has the perfect weather we yeah. just have to make sure we have enough heaters because yeah. Californians also get very cold. Yes. So <laughs> very easily. <laughs> easily. At six, hey, 70 is freezing. Okay. Six, yeah. five, that's the Arctic. So it's like, you know, we just I think it, I think it'll be here to stay. I think it's a good thing. Um, it gives you a lot more flexibility. Yeah. Um, and so I think that this is just this is just where we are. Um, so okay, so in terms of like how you've grown, like how how do you gain like when you start out a restaurant, how do you gain that initial momentum, right? Because you can spend all your time and money building something, but there's no guarantee they will come. Well, I mean, they say if you build it, they will come. Yeah, but that's not the world we live in, right? Like It's not. It's not. Um, you know what? Honestly, uh, for Poppy and Rose, it kind of just happened. Yeah. We didn't Tell us about that. Do you think it's the food? Do you think it's the environment? I think, it like... was, I think it's the food and the environment. And I think, mm -hmm. and you know, and the, 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 the greatest marketing is word of mouth. And mm -hmm. so, especially with people that are in very close proximity, they're telling their friends, oh, this new place just opened up. I love it. I love it. I love it. And so, you know, even like with Poppy and Seed, like, you know, people saw the building. Now they're curious. Now mm -hmm. they're hearing people talk about it. You know, we do our press, you know, but press isn't really what it does. It helps bring people through the door. But I think also the story also when people can connect to things, if you don't have a story or a brand or something that you're talking about, I think that people get bored. Your food could be good. But if I'm not feeling a vibe or feeling welcome when I walk through your doors, it could be pretty. I don't I don't want to eat here. And right. so, you know, our whole thing with our brand is that we're curating culinary experiences. So like it's from like what you smell, like, you know, like when you walk into Poppy and Rose, you smell flowers, you see flowers sitting on the table, you see affirmations. So then you understand that we're selling food for your soul. Right. So, you know, it's going to be comforting. Right. And you hear comforting music. You'll walk in and you'll hear 90s R&B one day. You might just hear Beyonce playlist one day. You might have Taylor Swift the, ne the next day, but it's something that everyone can kind of grab onto. Mm -hmm. Here at Poppy and Poppy and Seed, we sell what people would say is pretentious food. Um, Why would people say that? Because you know it's it's frou frou. You know you have caviar frou -frou. and you know frou -frou. and and octopus and you know mm. hand rolled pasta and you know wag steak and you know these these types of things that people will ribeyes. You know that people will say is pretentious. Like we have a strawberry and beets uh, salad. We have a crudo. We have a, a, a tartine, which is like an open face sandwich. Dang. So, you know, that's a little, you know. Um, but, I, don't, I, I think that's, yeah, maybe maybe I'm just bougie like that. That sounds lovely. That's regularly how I eat. That's what I'm saying. But yeah. <laughs> especially people, people in Orange County feel like this is pretentious, right? But how we, how we take the pretension out of it is that it's just that you we don't have to sit in here and not have a good time just because we're eating this type of food. Because yeah. normally when you go, you'll hear strings playing in the back. It's nice. It's low. But here mm -hmm. you'll hear R&B, mm -hmm. 80s classics. Like, you know, you'll hear your 2000s, maybe, maybe 2010s at yeah. a nice, you know, level. But it's it's to get you to have you to feel a vibe and enjoy your food and enjoy drinks. Right. And so I think that in order for you to build momentum, you got to give people something to talk about. A hundred percent. What are you what are you looking forward to? Like, what are your key initiatives in 2022? Like, how do you keep growing and scaling and getting butts in seats? <laughs> well, um, you know, like I say, and as you know, me and my husband, we live by this. We're just running our race. So mm -hmm. we're going to keep doing what we're doing. Um, keep up our, our in-kind efforts and making sure that we are attached to any community that we're in. 
Um, because one thing that I do know is when you support your community that you're in, especially as a business owner, they will support you. Um, and so we're just going to keep on being innovative with our food, um, keep on making sure that we're curating things that people want to do and want to see, um, and just keep being us and run our race. Yeah. Uh, you know, I really like that idea because when I figured out, when I figured out that I can just not have to worry about other people and just worry, like if I'm going to compete, I'm going to compete against my past self and being That's better true. than who I was yesterday. That's right. That's such a great like way of looking at the world because who cares what other people are doing? Maybe you might find inspiration, but the minute it turns into some something sour and uncomfortable, that's when it becomes kind of like really toxic. Yeah, and it takes so much energy to do that. I have other things that that takes a lot of energy for me to to be worrying about what someone else is doing and then trying to compete with them. Yeah. Right. I'd rather take that energy and work on me and my family and my business and my employees. Um, and there's there's no room for negativity. You start letting that negativity in and then it just festers into everything else. And people can feel it like people can feel it like your patrons can feel negativity. So if you're walking around and you're and you breathe and live off of, um, you know, competition instead of camaraderie and collab collaboration, People can feel that. And people like, I think after the pandemic, people don't want to be around that. It's too much. <laughs> yeah. We need a respite from all the drama. Yeah. People want to relax and feel welcomed and, you know, not feel forced or pressed. And so I think that, you know, we've done a good job of, you know, making people feel like they're coming into our home. So Queenie, how can, how can people uh, find you? All right, so my Instagram is at Queenie Land. That's K W I N I L A N D. Um, Poppy and Rose's handle is at Poppy and Rose L A. And Poppy and Seed is at Poppy and Seed O C. If you also want to follow my husband because he does a lot of you know tutorials and things like that where he's rolling pasta, um, that will be at Chef Michael Reed. Queenie Reed, owner of Poppy and Rose and Poppy and Seed, thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. Thank you for listening to this episode of the LA Business Podcast. If you like what we're doing on this podcast, please consider subscribing on Apple or Google Play, leaving a five-star review, and sharing with your friends. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations for a guest you'd like to hear on this podcast, please email me, robert at brillmedia.co. Thank you. Have a fantastic day.